prayer first and, uh, and then we'll get started this morning. Amen. Father, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father God, that we are your vessels, male and female, and that your spirit resides within us and that you love us and that you care about us. And when you sent Jesus, you sent not only for our sins, but we will find out today in your word that you, Jesus, died for our sickness and diseases as well, according to your word, and by his stripes we are healed. We just thank you, Father God, for the twofold redemption. You redeemed us from the curse of the law, which was sin and sickness and disease. And we just thank you, Father, that you be glorified, that as I speak, I speak only your words and not my own. I ask you for it in the name of your son, Jesus, and it is to you, Father, and Jesus, and your Holy Spirit, that I give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so uh, traditionally, we're used to hearing about Jesus in a manger, which is wonderful. Amen? If it wasn't for God sending Jesus, we'd all be in trouble. We'd all be sunk. We'd all perish without eternal life. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, that's just what our, uh, what our fate would be. But thank God... God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, and you'll hear through my husband, through his teachings, believe means obey also. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So the Lord uh, wanted me to share about healing lately. I've been, uh, he spoke to me, oh, probably about, um, about a year ago. Uh, and uh, he gave me a, a word that I wrote down in my notes, which I'm not going to read today, but he's really had me really focus on and study not only the forgiveness of sin, but healing and what Jesus did on the cross, okay? And you don't hear this a lot in church. I don't know why, but it's in the Bible, and it should be taught because there's so much sickness and disease, or has been, and you're going to see how Jesus went about doing good and healing all. Basically, his ministry was full of teaching love, preaching love, demonstrating love, and healing people wherever he went. And the faith that they had when he would teach, their faith would elevate, and they would put their trust in his words, say his words, and they would be healed, and they would be made whole. Amen? Okay, so he sent his word and healed them. That's Psalm 107.20. He sent his word and healed them. Jesus is the word made flesh. So when I say he sent his word and healed them, that's in the Old Covenant. When he sent Jesus, John says this, in what, 1 through 5 and verse 14. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Look at that. And the word was God. Puts a lot of, and she's holding a Bible right there. Hold your Bible up. That's the word of God. Jesus is the word made flesh. So when you read it or you hear it, you're hearing from God and Jesus Christ. Isn't that powerful? So like with me being up here with his spirit inside of me, you're not hearing me. I'm just reading what God tells me to read. So you're, re you're hearing from God himself. So let's read that again. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So in verse 14, it says, and the word, which is Jesus, say Jesus. Jesus. Okay, see, we've got to wrap our mind around that. Say, the word, the word. Is, Jesus. is Jesus. God sent his word and healed them. God sent Jesus to heal us. Amen? And the, word was, and the word, Jesus, was made flesh and dwelt among us. See? I didn't even have to put the name Jesus in there. I put that in there. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Pretty wild, eh? It's pretty awesome, if you think about it. And for some of you, it might dawn on you. You're like, oh my gosh, the word of God is Jesus. The word of God is God. 
Do you know there's a verse that says that he exalts his word above his own name? How powerful is the name of Jesus? Sickness and disease and demons and devils have to flee in the name of Jesus. Darkness has to flee in the name of Jesus. And he says that he exalts his word above his own name. Wow. I don't know about you, but that's a wow for me. Say wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. Excuse me, I'm going to get a little drink here. And the word Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let's begin with a very important verse of God's redemption plan. How Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. How he redeemed us from sin and sickness and disease. And it's written in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Uh, we're going to read the verses first, and then it's going to show the Hebrew meanings of these verses. Then we're going to read Matthew. Matthew actually speaks, says it in Matthew, and he, will, he also uses the, the Greek word, and so you'll see it in a moment here. Verse 4, Isaiah, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn there and you want to follow me, that's fine, or just follow me up here. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, Surely he, meaning Jesus, uh, has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Do you know what that means? That's your sins, right? See, we always preach about Jesus forgives our sins, but you don't hear that Jesus heals your body. Okay, so there's the transgressions, that's the sins. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, that's our sins. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Look at what it says here. And by his stripes we are healed. In verse 4 it reads, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The Hebrew word for griefs is sicknesses. So he took care of the iniquities. He, he basically brought sin upon his own body. And basically, just to paraphrase for you, when he brought sin in his own body, he also, sin uh, is, sickness and disease is a result of sin. So he literally took sin and sickness and disease in his own body. Now, if you want to study the Bible, if you want to get to know who God is, if you want to even learn this particular part of God, just get out your youngs and your strongs and look up the Greeks. Greek is New Testament. Look up the Hebrew. Hebrew is Old Testament, okay? And it will give you the true meanings of many of these words, okay? All right. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. It reads, again, that he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, the Hebrew word for grief is sickness, and the Hebrew word for sorrows is translated pains. Hmm. Matthew 8. I love this because Matthew, he basically quotes it with the proper, um, with the Hebrew uh, translation, or Greek translation. Matthew 8, 14 through 17. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. Did God put that fever on her? No. Sickness and disease, there's no evil in God. It says he can't be tempted with evil. I'm going to show you that in Acts 10.38, who the source is of sickness and disease. But because God so loved the world, he sent his son into the world, right? Not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We're going to learn something about the word saved and its meaning. So, which is Jesus, he was sent. So, if, if you've ever, who's read the, any of the New Testament? Who's ever read stories that Jesus healed the sick? Okay, all right, good. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. We just sang, hark the herald angels sing, with healing in his wings. That's a scripture. Healing in Jesus' wings. He came and he loved. And he be, when, he goes to, when he went to the cross, he became sin for us and he took our sickness and diseases upon his own body. 
See, there's so much fear in the world right now. We've not been around, we weren't around during the bubonic plague, but they had the same fear. Scarlet fever, they had the same fear. And all of a sudden in our generation, COVID shows up. Well, it's not from God. It's never from God. Uh, during the bubonic plague, there was a minister, I, his, I can't remember his name right now, but I'd have to look it up. I should know it, but I can't remember it. He was at his desk. This was, I think, 1700s, maybe 1800s. Anyways, it was, it was early on. He was at his desk, and he was crying. He had a church, and 40 people had died, and he was getting ready to bury five more. And he was crying out to God. He's like, God, are you doing this? And God told him to look up Acts 10.38. It's in my notes, but I'm going to quote it to you. We'll see it in a moment here. How God anointed Jesus, listen to this, with power and with the Holy Ghost, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the, who knows who it was? The devil. Oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. So if it wasn't God's will to heal, then why was he with Jesus healing the sick? You don't hear this in pulpits today. You know why? Because people get scared. Ooh, the devil. Well, he's real. 1 John 3, 8 says that uh, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So when Jesus came and healed the sick, when he touched her hand and the fever left her, guess what left her? Satan put that fever on her. Satan brought COVID. For the believer, you don't have to be afraid. God has not given you a spirit of fear, the Bible says, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Is this not good news? Wow. I don't know about you, but I'm able to walk around and go in stores and not be afraid. And most of the time, I don't wear a mask unless I absolutely have to to, get, to buy my meat at Gaff's, which I don't go in a... Rick goes in for me. I just don't. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death, has set us free from sickness and disease. But if you don't know that, then you're saying, okay, then why are there so many sick people? Well, part of that is the church isn't teaching what it should be teaching. So let me get back to that minister the Lord just reminded me. Okay, so the people were dying, bubonic plague. God gives them Acts 10.38, which I quoted to you. He started teaching healing according to the scriptures to his people. And guess what? They stopped getting sick and dying. They were praying for each other. And they were being healed. Well, who was healing them? The word made flesh. God's word. Well, Jesus isn't here anymore, but his spirit's in you. His word's still here. Jesus said, behold, I give you power. Listen, behold, I give you my name and my authority and my word. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Listen, and over all the power of the enemy. Jesus said that. You have that authority. Someone in your family gets sick. You get your nose in your Bible, and you start looking up those verses, and you start reading those verses to them. That's a whole other story. There's another woman. She was a doctor in Michigan. She was dying. This was, again, back in the many years ago. She was dying. The doctors could not help her, say so they couldn't help her. Medicine was limited, couldn't help her. She went to a... a, a, a a Christian, uh, there was another man, he had like this hospital where all they did was read healing verses. Listen. And many of those people got off of their deathbed because they started hearing the word of God that God wanted them well. Is that amazing? 
then she was made well, she used her faith, she started a home. Her sister was a nurse, she was a doctor, she started a home. I wish I could remember her name. I'll have to look it up. It's amazing how powerful the word of God. What did that verse say in Psalm 107:20? He sent his word and healed them. I don't know about you, but that's really good news. Right? Isn't that, good, isn't that good news? Okay, so, and he touched her hand and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered to them. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. See, there you go. Jesus sent him to destroy the works of the devil. He, they brought him many people who were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his what? His word. All he had to do was say, Go. Now we have his name. We can say, go in Jesus' name. Amen? Cast out the spirits with his word and healed, say, all. All that were sick. God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't say this one gets healed and this one doesn't. Jesus went into his own town, the only place where he could not, not would not, could not, do any mighty work except heal a few sick was in his own town of Nazareth. And you know what that scripture says? You can look it up later. Because of their doubt and unbelief. That was the only reason. There was no faith. No faith in itself. We know him. He was a carpenter. They already made up their mind. He thinks he's the son of God. He thinks he can come in and heal us. So he had to leave his own town with people sick and dying. He didn't want to. But he was able to heal a few because there was a little bit of faith there. Amen. How many has ever heard a message like this before? Be bold. See, I tell you, churches need to be teaching this, especially now. Not be afraid of scaring people and running them off. I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is this not the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is Jesus not the word made flesh? that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, which is Isaiah the prophet, the verses I read you earlier. Himself, Jesus, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2.24, who, who himself, Jesus, bore our sins, right? There's the sins. It's just like Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. In his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were what? healed. Now we're going to look at some verses that use the word save or saved, and their Greek word is sozo, which means heal and make well. So throughout the New Testament, when you see words save or saved, he's talking about forgiveness of sins, yes, and healing. Well, where does that come from? That comes from those Hebrew words. Sicknesses and pains. Healing. Forgiveness of sin and healing. If I was a, com a writer, composer, today I'd be writing yeah, sins, sins and sicknesses, which I love that Maria pulls out songs that talk about healing in his wings. Hark the herald angels sing with healing in his wings. Forgiveness of sin and healing. See, here's what happened. How many remember Adam and Eve? Before they ate the apple, which my husband's been teaching on lately, were they sick? Was there sin? When did sickness come? After the sin. Sickness is connected to sin. Well, who's the author of sin? Satan. So we don't have to be afraid. We have Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, if you're not. I was 20 years old, 21. I think I was getting ready to turn 21. My father, when he was a boy, he heard God's audible voice. He didn't tell me this till two weeks before he went to go be with Jesus. It's in my book, Love Awakens, the story. And uh, he never told anybody um, and until then, 
but he always brought me to church. I went to a Lutheran church, then later on a Methodist church. Then my dad started going to some church meetings, and he came back, and he was changing. There was something different about him. And he would pray in the spirit, and uh, I was like, what's going on with my dad? And then my brother, Bob. Bob, if you're watching, I'm going to tell him, Bob, you need to watch this. My brother, Bob, he became a Christian, my and my dad gave his life to the Lord, my brother, and a number of members of my family. And they were basically working on me. Somebody gave me a track. How many of you know what a track is? Okay. Somebody gave me a track. And uh, my brother came in, and he was sharing Jesus with me. And I'm like, wait a second. My brother has long hair. He, he's a hippie. He was a party dude. And now look at him. Now he's, he's preaching Jesus to me. Wow. So then one day I was going through some things in my life and I read this track and it was telling me about Jesus and going to the cross and taking my sins and uh, and I'm reading this track and I was ready you know so I gave my life to the Lord that day and I tell you it was like the, the Spirit of God the blanket of God just rested on me and I sobbed like a baby See, what happens when you become a Christian is the Spirit of God comes to live inside of you. You can't see the Holy Spirit, but he's here. It's just like the wind. Can you see the actual wind? No. You can see the effects of the wind. So what happens is, is he takes your old stony heart and he makes it a heart of flesh. What happens is, is you, don't, you can't figure this out with your head. It has, you have to believe it in your heart. His Spirit comes to live inside of you and all of a sudden, you're this new person, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Then when you start to read and hear his words, they start to make sense. To the world, it doesn't make sense. To the world, it's foolishness. To the world, when they hear me talk about Jesus, they think I'm a crazy nut. To a Christian, they're like, well, all right, she's speaking the word. I've never heard this sermon before like today, but she's speaking the word of God. It's the word of God. And all you have to do is believe on him, call out his name, and don't stop there. Once you become a Christian, you obey him. That's what we teach here, obey. Obey means love your neighbor, forgive, help the poor, feed the hungry, take care of the homeless. We have a home for Age Out Foster Girls Legacy Housing Project. My son and his wife, are the directors of it. These are members of our legacy house. They're our family. We're all orphans adopted by God, all of us. We've fed the homeless for almost six years, over 30,000 meals. Why am I telling you this to gloat? No, just to show you what Christians are supposed to do. We're getting ready to, I, I, my husband's going to share on this pretty soon, but we're, I just put up a post yesterday. Um, Ten people, $1,000, I'm going to take three homeless women off the street, put them in a house. We're not, like, showing all this yet because he's going to teach a little bit more on it, which I can teach on it, but I'm not doing that today. So... Basically, when you become a Christian, his spirit of love is inside of you to do good for others. That's what Christianity is all about. To help people, to share Jesus, yes, but to show them. They, your good deeds of love will glorify your Father in heaven, the Bible says. You're glorifying God. Amen? All right, so that was a little sidetrack. Now we're going to look at those verses. Okay, sozo, the Greek word sozo, which means heal. John 3, 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, Jesus, the word made flesh, might be saved. There's that word saved. Forgiveness of sin and healing for the physical body. So that the world might be saved. So that we might be saved. Forgiveness of sin and healing for the body. Say it with me. Forgiveness, forgiveness. And, healing. and healing. Say it again. Forgiveness, forgiveness. and healing. Amen? James 5, 14 through 16. Is any sick among you? 
Let him call or her call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him or her, anointing them in, with oil in the name of the Lord. Look at verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. There's save, which means heal, restore to health. The prayer of faith will restore them to health. The prayer of faith will heal them will heal the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed any sins, they'll be forgiven him. Well, is it God's will to heal? That says you can call for the elders of the church. And I went to a Bible school, um, Rama Bible Training Center. It's now Rama Bible College, and you'll have to research his history. He's with Jesus now, but Brother Kenneth E. Hagan was healed on, he used his faith according to the word of God, he didn't have some preachers come in and lay hands on him. He didn't have, know anybody. He came from a Baptist background. And he told God, he said, God, because he read that first, he goes, I go to a church, they don't believe in this. They don't believe in healing. So I don't have any elders to come and anoint me with oil and pray a prayer of, prayer of faith so that I can be healed. So he said the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, look at that verse. 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. He said, you can say that prayer as well as anybody. I'm going to point to you. You can say that prayer. You know what the prayer of faith is? I can't go into it, but it's Mark chapter 11. Say to this mountain, Jesus said, have faith in God. If any man says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in the things which he says will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And when you stand praying, forgive. For if you do not forgive, neither will your Father forgive you. So number one, forgive before you go to the Lord in prayer. Get rid of that unforgiveness. In heaven, there's only God and love. And he does not allow unforgiveness in heaven. There is no unforgiveness in heaven. you got to deal with it here. Get rid of it. Ask God to help you. Forgive. What did Jesus do on the cross? These people beat him. They crucified him. They were cruel. What did Jesus say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We all have people that have hurt us. All of us. But if you have the Spirit of God inside of you, you have his love shed abroad in your heart. You and I have the ability to forgive. And if it's difficult, like I've had many in my life, I always go to God and say, God, this is a tough one. You're going to have to help me on this one. Just talk to him. Ask him to help you. Okay, so back to prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. I'm a young mom. My a younger son, this is my older son. My younger son became ill. They thought he had leukemia. He had signs of it. He's in the hospital. I had already gone to Rhema, so I'd already started learning a little bit about faith and healing. And all I did was pray in the Spirit and speak the Word of God over my son. What did they say? Jesus said the Word. I just, spe I just spoke the Word of God over him. My faith began to elevate stronger and stronger. I'm brought into the nurse's station. The doctor, Dr. Joy, she was a very sweet woman was preparing me for the worst, which is what medical professionals do, because, listen, that's all they know, so I'm not knocking the medical profession. And I looked at her very kindly and gently and calmly. And I said, if what you're doing doesn't work, my God will. My God will. My God will. And I pointed to heaven. It was either the next day or the following day. He was released completely well. She had me come in for a checkup, and she asked me about my faith. That was probably her first sign and wonder she'd ever seen. Listen, God's not a respecter of persons. There's many people who lose family members, and it's not because God did it to them. Never. Sadly, it's because they don't know the word of God about healing. Bible, biblical, healing. Jesus with healing in his wings. Sadly, people blame God. It's not his fault. He already did it. He sent Jesus. 
we should be shouting from the rooftops. Amen? Father, I thank you for your love and your mercy and your spirit and your healing and your forgiveness. Father, we worship you this morning. Father. Thank you, Lord. And if they've committed any sin, they will be forgiven him. James will continue. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. That minister, he taught his church and the church began to pray for one another. When they heard somebody that started to get sick, listen, when somebody started to get sick, how many of you ever prayed the prayer of faith when somebody on Facebook said, Will you pray for me? I'm sick, or my family's sick. The Lord won't let me scroll past. Even if I don't say anything, even if I don't like it or comment, I ask God to have mercy on them and heal them. Have mercy and heal. And mean it and believe it from your heart. Pray for that person. Amen? Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. That you may be healed. Wow. Wow. I don't know about y'all, but this is this. Verse 16, it says, that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Basically, the prayer of faith avails much. Moving right along. Romans 10, 8 through 10. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in your mouth. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The word of God is in your mouth. It's got to come out of your mouth. Oh, if it's your will, Lord, heal me. It's his will. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Even though I have these symptoms or even though that I feel this pain, I just thank you, God, that I am healed. Pain, sickness, go in the name of Jesus. I am healed. Your mind will fight you. Your soul is at enmity with God. It resists the word of God. Your spirit, your heart receives it. Listen to that. Don't listen to this. This will talk you out of it every time. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your heart starts to receive it, and your faith starts to elevate. And then all of a sudden... Sickness shows up, you're on it like a, I won't even say it. You're on it. <laughs> okay, moving right along. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Jesus, the word made flesh. He sent his word, Jesus, and healed them. And in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith, the word of faith, not the word of doubt. Listen, not the word of, is it your will, Lord? The word of faith that we preach, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I'm a preacher, and I used to go on the streets of Michigan and preach salvation to people, and I use this verse all the time. You know what the Lord showed me this week? He said, Nina, that word saved doesn't just mean forgiveness of sins. It means healing, too. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Your sins shall be forgiven. Your body shall be healed. You're healed and saved. You're forgiven. Is it, is it dawning on anybody yet a little bit? Good. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you, Father, for forgiving of my sins. But with the mouth, confession is made unto healing. Thank you, Father, for healing me, for healing my family. Amen. I hear him sucking on his cup. That's my grandson. Same as Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, healing for the physical body and forgiveness of sins. Believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. You shall be saved. 
Believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be forgiven. Believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be made whole. Wow. John 3, 17 again. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, healed. Acts 10, 38. That's that verse I quoted earlier. I wanted you to see it and read it. You don't have to read it out loud, but follow it with me. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing who? All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. We're celebrating Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. He's not a baby anymore. He was a man. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. That's our Lord and Savior. He's now seated at the right hand of God. Imagine, I've heard people that have gone to heaven, they've said that one woman said the throne is 25 miles high. There's God, Jesus on the right, the Holy Spirit on the left. And Jesus is with us. Behold, I give you power, Luke 10, 19. I'll quote it again, listen. Behold, I give you power, Jesus said, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You might, you might ask, well, have you ever seen the devil? Uh, absolutely, yes, I have. My kids were little. They were all sleeping. It was 2 in the morning. I was praying in the Spirit. And the Lord showed up in my home. I couldn't see him. I actually got on my face and I said, Jesus, I know you're here. You don't have to show yourself to me. I know you're here. And he spoke Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And I thought, why is he telling me this? I had no idea. I go to bed, Rick's asleep, I lay on my back, and all of a sudden I couldn't move anything. It was as if there were about a hundred people holding me down. At the foot of the bed, just like in Christmas movies, you see the cloak, that evil, dark, the death Christmas spirit. Well, that's what he had on. I couldn't move, but my spirit, my born-again spirit was able to speak. The only thing I could move was my lips, just like this. And I said, in the name of Jesus, go. He didn't go. I did it again. In the name of Jesus, go. Didn't go. Third time, a little more authority. In the name of Jesus, go. Gone. Well, were you asleep and dreaming? Nope, because I hopped right out of bed, ran downstairs, and said, what was that? I knew what it was. That's who Jesus came to destroy. The name of Jesus, devils flee. They have to. They have to go. They have to. Sickness and disease has to. It has to go. It took about three, maybe four days for my son to get out of that hospital. Did that stop me? No way. My kid was going to live, and he wasn't going to have to have all those treatments done. Not going to happen. Wasn't going to happen. Because I knew Jesus, the healer. Amen? We're almost done. Oh, we are done. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. And then, Rich, you, uh, we'll, we'll say goodbye in a second on Facebook. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, your son. And I just thank you, Father God, that we don't have to be afraid, for you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And the Lord just told me there's somebody in here that God's speaking to you, and he's, gonna, he's calling you. He's already planned this out for your life. It's a man. He's called you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
This may be the first time you're hearing it, or this may be a confirmation of what you already know in your heart. I don't know. He hasn't told me that. You may have been running from it. He's asking you, don't run anymore. He will not. He can't force his will upon anyone because we're free will agents. But he's imploring you to yield to him and to serve him. And if that's you, you talk to God. Don't put it off. Go somewhere quiet and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. And if you don't know anything about the word of God, that's okay. He loves that. He loves to be able to teach you. You read his words. Don't listen to religion. Don't listen to doctrines of man. He wants you to listen to him, his word, and the Holy Spirit. And he will lead and guide you into all truth. And he will devise your way. He will direct your steps. He'll lead you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is why he's doing this. This is why he calls you and his ministers. Because there are people that he wants to reach so that they do not go to hell. And you're going to be the only person that they're going to hear from God and Jesus from. And he wants you to love them. And you might say to yourself, but you know what? I've been a sinful man. It doesn't matter. Ask God to forgive you. If you haven't believed on him as your Lord and Savior, believe him now and ask him to use you because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is nobody righteous other than Jesus. There is nobody worthy other than Jesus. But because of Jesus, we are called to be his representatives, his ministers. So he wants you to yield to him. Like I said, like he said, he won't force you, but he's speaking to your heart. How do I know he's speaking to my heart? Well, your heart's probably beating out of your chest right now. That's usually how the Holy Spirit, he's speaking, and your heart's thumping. And that's just God talking to you by his spirit. Remember, the spirit is just like the wind. You can't see it, but it's real. Thank you, Father. If there's any sickness or disease at the sound of my voice, either on Facebook, anybody with, with sickness or disease, and you've been listening to the word of God this morning, by faith in Jesus' name, you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. And in the name of Jesus, I command all sickness, all disease, and all pain to go in the name of Jesus, I bind the strong man in the name of Jesus. Healing and wholeness in the mercy of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sending your son. We worship you, O oh Lord. How oh, we glorify your name. For your name is the name above all names. Jesus, we welcome you. Emmanuel, for you are with us wherever we go. For you are with us wherever we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Rachel. Thank you. Let's uh, uh, say goodbye to Facebook. Thank you, Facebook. <laughs>